Web services are programs that provide useful functionalities. They're provided to us, published, on servers, so that we can locate and invoke them through a network that is usually the Internet. Web services could be considered black boxes, because we ignore how they're internally implemented. But we need not be concerned with that aspect. The important thing is to be aware of the functionalities they offer and the parameters they require, as well as the elements they provide in return. The parameters that are part of our communications with web services are called messages. The applications that invoke a web service may be developed in any language and platform as long as they maintain the capacity to create and consume the messages specified by the web service. Having introduced the concept, we will now see how to invoke and consume a web service from a Genexus application. And we'll also confirm, of course, that we can also define and publish web services with Genexus. So, let's start by supposing that the travel agency has requested a new functionality which is the possibility of offering customers a list of all countries, showing for each of them its capital city, its currency, and its flag. To solve this, we will invoke a specific web service which, after searching, we found published. Its name is Country Info Service, and it's capable of returning the referred information and more. So once in Genexus, from the Tools section, we select Option, Application Integration, and then WSDL Import. Note that a wizard opens up where we must first of all indicate the location of the web service to be consumed. We press Next. We leave the default information and then press Next again. To end, we press Import. Note that the folder view window now shows a number of objects, that Genexus created as a result of the import made. We can see a group of structured data types and an external object with the name of the web service we imported. An external object is an object of the Genexus type that allows communication between our application and an external resource, which in our case is the web service to be consumed. When we double click on the external object, we can view all the methods that the web service has to offer. In other words, all the functionalities. In our requirement, we must have the capital city, the currency, and the flag for each country. So we will respectively use the capital city, country currency, and country flag methods. Note that the three methods we will invoke receive the country ISO code as parameter. This is an international standard that assigns codes to countries which are used by different organizations, companies, and governments worldwide. For instance, for Uruguay, the code is UI while Brazil is BR, and the United States of America, US, and so on. So now, let's go to the country transaction to see that we've defined a new country ISO attribute to store the value of the ISO code corresponding to each country. To save time in the table's physical reorganization and the loading of ISO codes, we've already solved for that. Also, we've already started to create a procedure called Countries Info. to implement the PDF listing requested by the travel agency. In the Procedures Layout section, we can see the Title Print block with the titles, as well as the Countries Print block, where we will insert the attributes and variables necessary. We want to view the country names, and this is information we have in our database, so we insert the country name attribute. So for each external object, Genexus will create an associated data type, and this means that in order to use the web service, we will define a variable of the country info service type 
so we can access all of its methods. Let's now go to the source to start writing the code we need. The first sentence is already written, as we know, to print the titles. Now we want to go over the country table, so we write for each, and then country. Because it's the name of the transaction for which the associated physical table is country. Now let's see what else we must declare and define for the web service to return the information we require. We can start by finding out how to obtain the country's capital city. Note the methods list again, where you will see that the capital city method receives the country's ISO code to return a character data type. So in our procedure, we define a variable called capital of the character data type. In the source, inside the for each, since we want to do all this for each country navigated, we will include the capital variable following the equal sign as an assignment. And to receive the country's capital city in the capital variable, to the right of the sign we introduce this syntax variable country info service dot and the web service method we want to execute in this case capital city end to end we send the country iso attribute by parameter to the method invoked now let's continue towards obtaining the currency for each country the country currency method also receives as parameter the country's ISO code, but it returns the country info service currency data type. The definition of the country info service currency data type is this SDT created in the knowledge base. Let's take a look at its structure. We can see that it consists of two simple items, the currency code and the currency name. We want to obtain the currency name that is, the value loaded in the sName field. Let's then define a new variable in our procedure with the name currency, and of the character data type. We go to the source and define the following sentence. To the currency variable, we will assign the country info service variable followed by a dot, and we apply the country currency method. We send the country ISO code by parameter, and if we leave it as is, the return will be a combined data type with two different data, but since we want only the currency name, we write dot and s name. Now we will obtain the country flag. Note that the country flag method also receives the country ISO code and returns the character data type. So we will define another variable in our procedure called flag, which we will define of the character type. We go to the source and to the flag variable we assign the variable country info service dot and we execute the country flag method sending the country ISO code. Now let's analyze the following. In the flag variable, we stored a character value returned by the country flag method of the country info service web service. But we need to view the flag's image, so we must convert that character data into an image data. Again, we go to the procedures sector of variables, and this time we define a variable called country flag. Of the image data type. 
And in the source, we define the following sentence. The variable country flag dot from URL parentheses ampersand flag close parentheses to convert the character of the flag variable into an image. The from URL method may be applied to all variables and attributes of the image type, passing a character with the path by parameter. Now that we have all the variables we must show loaded with their corresponding values, we go to the layout section and insert these variables in the country's print block. and we complete our source by indicating that the country's print block is to be printed. Then we close the for each with the corresponding n4. And now we're ready to view our listing in runtime. We should just remember that we must declare the properties for the output format to be PDF. So, we configure the main program property with true value the call protocol property with the HTTP value and declare the output file rule to generate the PDF listing. Now we click with the right mouse button on the procedure tab and select run. and we will see the listing with all the information on it. So now we've seen how to import and consume a web service available on the internet in our Genexus application. And of course, we can also create web services with Genexus and publish them so that they may be invoked by other applications or by our own applications. In sum, to define a web service in Genexus, we must create a procedure object and configure its properties main program with value true, and call protocol with the value soap, and then implement the desired functionality. For instance, let's suppose that we want to implement a procedure to publish it as a web service. This web service will receive a flights identifier and make some validations and controls that will return a status. So we create a new procedure object. We'll call it flight status. and it would have the following Parm rule declared. In the source, we would put the flight and validate what is necessary to then load the status. In order for this procedure to be published as a web service and be available to be used by other applications, we would have to configure properties. Main program with the value true and call protocol with the value soap. The input and output data is specified in the procedure's Parm rule. The procedure receives a flight's identifier and returns a status. Once compiled, the procedure is available to be consumed by any application, Genexus or non-Genexus, from the same KB or not. So, let's execute the run option on our flight status procedure. This execution allows us to view the XML generated defining the path that will later be used to consume the web service. It's also possible to create a web service by publishing a business component as service or a data provider as service. To end, we update changes on the GX server.